When the Chicago Bulls fired Tom Thibodeau last year, much was said about the relationship he had with the front office. His extreme intensity, keep grinding, keep grinding. Don't quit. Take down. and his propensity for overplaying his guys to the point of injury. And while Thibodeau is most notable for the way his ice defense revolutionized pick and roll coverage, it's his offense that never got much attention. During his tenure running the Chicago Bulls, Thibodeau had his teams run the pure triangle offense on an estimated 25% of their half-court possessions. I went through over 500 of them going back two years to find out how dedicated the team was to running the triangle and its concepts and it was startling to see. The New York Knicks just fired Derek Fisher, and one of the reasons cited was his reluctance to embrace the full triangle. Phil Jackson has made it clear he wants to stick to a system of basketball that upholds the triangle's principles. The uh, system of basketball is what's important. We're, we're talking about a system here, and this happens to be a system that you know we, we're familiar with, so it's not paramount, it's important. It's apparent there isn't a close bond between Jackson and Thibodeau because of the camps they originated from, but if Phil took a closer look at what Thibodeau did in Chicago, he'd realize they're both made from the same cloth. Tough, positional defense and five fingers on a hand offense were hallmarks of Phil's most successful teams. Thibodeau's Bulls elevated that system of defense to new levels and the fact that nobody noticed he is a triangle offense coach, in Chicago no less, is nothing short of shocking to me. For a clearer understanding of the basics of the triangle, check out my Encore demos here. Phil Jackson himself did, and it will help with the basics. The most common action the Bulls ran by far was the second one in the triangle, pinch post. One reason it's so devastating is because it creates a two-man game at the elbow, one dribble away from a layup or a dunk. Tibbs did a good job to disguise the offense with some basic motion to initiate. However, this shuffle cut to the low post to form the triangle on the left side is right out of Tech's winner's book. Butler passes to Noah at the elbow and cuts around looking for the pass back. If nothing is there, the offense flows smoothly back to the other side, where Boozer has commanded great low post position due to all the movement, and an ISO post up layup follows. The first look in pinch post is always the handoff back to the cutter coming around the outside. This allows the guard to make quick decisions about whether to shoot if his defender gets hung up on the pinch screen, or cut on the inside of the pinch post to find a seam in the defense for a layup. The shuffle cut screen serves to pull Noah's man towards the ball, opening up the pinch post cut, and on the weak side, they set a back screen for the wing, and it's a simple pass for the layup. They were never far from finding some triangle action rather than stand there and wait for a play call from the bench. Here's Butler breaking into pinch post off a broken transition opportunity, netting them a three. When Powell came along, it was a very smooth transition to get him into what he did so well with the Lakers. Tibbs added a quick pin down for the weak side guard before flashing to the pinch post. And again, the handoff here is always the first look if he's open, for reasons pretty obvious. The handoff can also serve as a screen, as Noah first screens for Rose, then flows to the pinch post before rubbing Rose's man off and getting another dunk. The spacing on this kind of handoff action always dictates that players fan out to the three-point line, opening up more lanes to attack into the paint. Having the pinch post receiver set the off-ball screen first is a very good tweak of the original triangle offense, enabling an easier pass to the top and then flow right into the handoff action. Even though they didn't run pure triangle all the time, watch how its principles enable the Bulls to flow into pinch post. Butler chooses to cut down the middle instead of on the high side of Noah, and this leads right into a dribble pitch two-man game. Notice the triangle reshapes on the right side, and the corner option always calls for the passer to speed cut to the hoop. How can any defense possibly defend this? Tex Winter's triangle had a shuffle cut action built in whenever there was a guard-to-guard -guard pass out top. Tibbs tweaked this by having the guard cut up from the wing instead of having both guards be even across the top. But it's pure triangle from here. Dunleavy shuffles around Noah's screen, and if he's open, boom. 
there's room to read and react. Butler finds the opening up the lane line instead of the curl, and it leads to a wide open 15 footer. The real special sauce to this action is how it flows right into pinch post. It's almost disguised as flex as Rose cuts underneath Noah before Dunleavy shuffles to the strong side low block. All those cutters simply opens up pinch post for Noah and they get that back screen on the weak side for Pow, who's already at full speed to the hoop. This was a very popular action for them, utilizing the good vision of Noah at the pinch post and the movement got Pow open a whole lot. By having the guard back screen the big, it confused the defense by putting defenders in situations they don't normally have to deal with. While Noah is exceptional at passing from the pinch post, making normal passes is something that can be taught and still guarantee a good shot, since getting the ball at the pinch post area is always a good thing. For the low post entry, the key here is that there are two cutters making basket cuts simultaneously after the low post receives the ball. The wing screens for the weak side forward, and Dunleavy sets his own back screen, which frees him up for the reversal to an open three. The Bulls would dribble to the wing a lot and already have the corner filled, which is different than the traditional triangle which typically starts with the guard forward pass, then the guard loosens up to the corner. The Lakers ran corner entry to the low post for Shaq all the time, and you can see two simultaneous cutters, one which opens up the duck in for Taj. The triangle action is designed to be run on either side of the floor, so when the first low post entry gets deflected, it's a smooth transition to the other side of the floor. Two cutters, and Heinrich can read the floor from his position and find the opening. The high post option out of the triangle consisted of a guard forward pass, a UCLA cut, into inside ball screen. Tibbs turned this into hawk action with a double down screen on the weak side, and even with the pass to the roll man, Dunleavy is still open for the three. Because the triangle dictates that all five men move on each pass, you can see how there's a free flow to it that resembles what the Spurs and Warriors do, and how getting the ball to key spots generates open looks from anywhere. The defense gets so caught up with the weak side action of the double down screen that often there is no weak side help until it's too late, even for a Kirk Heinrich floater. The initial cutter tends to get lots of opportunities after the UCLA cut, and the dribble pitch to him out of the corner is something triangle teams practice thousands of times. We saw some evidence that Tibbs incorporated the corner option, which triggers a cutter to the hoop, then a ball screen. Most NBA teams run this, and you can see, even with the ball stopping at the top, it provides openings for creative guards to penetrate and dish. I even came across the triangle's brother from another mother, the Princeton offense, once. Guard to guard pass, then a back screen from the high post before a ball screen. Shots open everywhere on this possession. And finally, there were tons and tons of possessions that weren't pure triangle, but you can clearly see the concepts to the point where the triangle was simply seeping into their basic motion offense, generating action that conceivably hadn't even been drawn up before. And this is exciting. The Bulls run the Spurs motion weak, with Heinrich making the shallow cut to the weak side and flex action happening under the hoop. But now watch how it morphs into pinch post and ends up with Miritich down low with all the space in the world to operate and get a shot off. With Powers flash in the middle, it became the third option in the triangle, blind pig. And though the spacing got wonky for Rose's drive, it opened up the shot for Powell. If you don't pass to the pinch post, the next progression is to set a pin down for the strong side corner and have the ball out top dribble pitch to him in pistol action. It's all downhill skiing from there. Fake handoffs are staples of the triangle, as are weak side slip screens to the hoop. And if they can't find that cutter, it becomes a high post split with Dunleavy coming off the pinch post, and a few dribbles open up the lane for Noah to finish. And finally, if the defense covers up all those things, Noah can drive, suck in the help one pass away, and find the shooter in the corner all alone to fire up the easiest three in basketball. While the Knicks begin their search for a new coach, assuming the interim tag on Kurt Rambis isn't removed, they should seriously consider someone who has the experience under the pressure of the second biggest market in the NBA, 
had almost unparalleled success with a very fluid roster that never had stability, and already has intimate knowledge of the one thing that Phil Jackson holds sacred, the triangle offense.